of how to care for your cochlear implant internally and externally. So um, internally, the implant itself, you know, you want to be careful when if you're practicing, practicing any kind of sports. Um, and so you want to keep that protected, sometimes using a helmet or some kind of band that will uh, soften anything that <laughs> hits your head. So you really don't want to hit your head or fall on the concrete or any of those kind of things. Um, you want to protect your head from now on due to those uh, implants. So if you ever do, let your radiologist know and they'll kind of calculate to see if you need an x-ray to make sure that that implant is okay. Um, if you're working in a factory, you know, any of those kind of things in which your head could suffer a blow, then you want to make sure that you keep your uh, head protected. Uh, the external piece, we've talked about it a little bit, you know. I've talked about this little soft uh, piece of cloth that I have here and how I wipe it down from time to time. Uh, especially when um, I have to see the audiologist and I really clean it. <laughs> but, you know, I have a soft cloth available, you know, for my processors. So it's good to uh, clean it uh, from time to time just with a soft uh, piece of cloth. Uh, you want to be careful for those women who use hairspray. You don't want to spray your processor, so <laughs> you want to keep them off until you're done, you know, fixing your hair. I don't use any of those products, but just in case. Um, oils and grease, you know, guys sometimes use them, uh, and women too. Uh, so you want to be careful how much gets on the processor, and you want to clean them off, especially in the microphone area. Um, I had a friend who used a lot of grease, and he showed me his processors, and I almost fainted. Uh, it was full of grease. <laughs> so I barked at him a little bit, and he, he laughed. But, you know, it's important if you're using grease in your hair to make sure that those processors are um, clean. Uh, keep them keep safe from, from the grease. Uh, sand and dust of all kinds, you know, and that's why it's good to, to wipe them down maybe once a week with, with that little cloth that I, that I show you. You know, this is for glasses, uh, but, you know, I just wash it over and over, and I use it, you know, and I wipe it down. I wipe my processors down to get that dust off, um, especially when I lived in the desert in Arizona, um, you know, there was a lot of dust there. Sometimes we had wind and high winds and dust. And uh, so I just made sure that I cleaned off the microphone areas. Um, so, you know, if you're at the beach or whatever, when you get home, it's good to wipe it off. Uh, in the rain, let's talk about the rain. And I'm talking about uh, Cochlear America uh, processors here. Um, and I'm sure it applies to other processors. But um, in the rain, you know, my audiologist said that, you know, if, if I get caught in a downpour, you know, it, it's okay. When I get home, just dry them off and put them in the dry-in store. Um, or if it's raining a little bit, you know, it won't affect the processors much. But make sure that I dry them off when I get home. So, you know, the, the processors are sort of uh, water resistant, but not waterproof. So, and you might see the sun kind of coming and going. It's kind of weird today. So, <laughs> so I have a lot of sun coming in and then it goes away. So anyway, um, so with rain, you want to be cautious. You know, if I know I'm going out in the rain, I'll take them off, put them in a pouch, put them in my pocket, and then I'll put them on when I get to the other end. <coughs> so, so rain, you want to be a little cautious with that. Accidents. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of things that could happen. Uh, oh, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, I was going to an appointment, and I was walking on the, on the sidewalk, obviously, and the sidewalk was uneven, so I, I tripped on the sidewalk, and I went flying, 
uh, and I landed full force on my knees. Uh, my processors went flying um, and back in the day when I didn't use Huggies. And so, uh, like, three or four people came running, you know, to help me. And, you know, we found one processor and the other one, uh, for the life of me, I couldn't find it. So we, I decided that I would go to my appointment and then I would come back to that spot and, and look for it a little bit more. But anyway, um, my <laughs> provider was all worried about me and so my knees were really scraped up. But um, I went back to that spot and I was looking all over and this guy kindly came over to, to help me. He saw me on my, on my knees, you know, looking for something and it was painful because I had already scraped myself up but um, I just couldn't find it, and I was just so beside myself. I was just worried, and you know, now what was gonna happen, and all that kind of stuff. So I sadly, I went home, and I took off my jacket, I took off my, my satchel, and there it was. It got stuck from the magnet. The magnet got stuck on one of the metal parts of my satchel. <laughs> So there it was the whole time. So I, I was very grateful that, you know, it. I was very grateful for the magnet. And it just stuck on my satchel. It was there the whole time I was looking for it. So that's kind of a funny story, but not so funny. Because, you know, when you fall and, and things go flying, uh, it's really hard to, you know, find them sometimes. So uh, be careful with that, you know, if, if that ever happens to you and you're camping or whatever and you fall or something happens um, and you can't find the processors, look on your satchel. <laughs> Just kidding. But if you can't find it, um, let your audiologist know right away. Um, and if your audiologist is away or on vacation or whatever, you want to call the cochlear implant company, whichever one you used, and let them know the accident, because uh, sometimes there is some coverage, I think, for a one-time replacement. So um, you, you really want to let them know right away. Um, pets and kids, oh my God. You know, because the processors smell like you, and you know, it, it, it looks like a toy of some kind, uh, dogs sometimes, and sometimes cats will, uh, you know, knock it down on the floor and chew them up. So you 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 want to have them in some kind of container, you know, uh, overnight. I, I do have like a little container that I put them in because I don't want water to spill on them. So let me let me show you what I use. It's nothing fancy, it's just a leftover stay and dry that I use. You know, I don't think you can find these on the market anymore, but I just put it in there and I'm just concerned that on my little table over there something could spill, like water or juice, and I don't want that to happen. You also want to keep them away from kids. <laughs> the kids might see it as a spaceship of some kind, so <laughs> grab it. <laughs> Just throw it in the air, <laughs> see what it does. <laughs> Run down to the lake and say, oh, let's see if it can fly. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Into the lake. <laughs> so keep them away from kids. <laughs> magnets. Uh, you, know, you know your processors have magnets, uh, but you don't want magnets or anything that's magnetized to um, you know, get close to your processors because that really could ruin the chips that are in there. So you want to be careful with magnets. If you're using magnets for other reasons, uh, you want to be careful when you throw things in your purse or whatever. You got to make sure there's not magnets in there of any kind. So I'm usually very conscious about magnets. I do have one big magnet that I use here to pick up things from the floor. Uh, I have m a small magnet on my reacher, has a little tiny magnet, kind of help me pick up keys and stuff. 
But still, you want to be careful uh, on what you do with magnets and, and don't get them close to your processor because that could impact the, the chips. Um, let's see. Electrical tools, you know, um, anytime I go into surgery, I um, certainly don't um, have my processors on. Some people are really uptight about that and, and want to have their processors on throughout surgery, and you can certainly do that, but um, they also, uh, the, the surgery room is obviously sterile, but also it's very dry, and static could happen there, and also, um, you know, static electricity could impact things, uh, or magnetic forces uh, in, in a, a surgery room, there could be uh, that kind of thing, or an MRI. You don't want to go in an MRI with your processors. <laughs> or with your cochlear implants, if they're the older version and they're not made for MRIs, then, then you don't want to do that either. <laughs> I've been in an MRI. Uh, it was kind of urgent. They put this wrap on my head, and that didn't work either. I really suffered through that one. Uh, but, you know, electrosurgery and diathermy. Now, I don't know what a diathermy is. It sounds really dangerous, so I wouldn't go near it. It might bite. Uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, in surgery, sometimes they use those electric saws and other electrical apparatuses in, in a surgical room. So, y you know, you can use your processors, but there could be uh, a danger or a concern that that static electricity or the electrical, you know, uh, apparatus that they're using could uh, deprogram your processor. So I don't know if you knew that or not, but um, it, it, is a, it is a concern. So when I go into surgery, I don't wear my processors at all because um, I don't want to put them on and, and then realize, oh, I'm not hearing anything. Something must have happened. So, and then have to call my audiologist. So, uh, you really want to avoid putting on your processors during surgery. I know some people really want to have them on. Uh, so then when they wake up, they can hear what's going on. But, um, you know, I would suggest not. Um, electroconvulsive therapy, of course not. <laughs> You want to keep your processors off, and you want to consult with the audiologist anytime you're you're going into any kind of electrical type surgery uh, or electrical tools are going to be using. Uh, you know how that will impact your processors or the internal component, um, anything electrical, and anything that has to do with with magnets as well. So. Uh, so those those are the you know I'm I'm reading you know a big long list here of things to not do and they're they're really fun uh, so and and dangerous <laughs> so <coughs> uh, so you know keep your processors in in a safe place away from magnets away from electricity away from you know anything you know even the dentist you know i don't know about the dentist i've been to the dentist a million times and nothing has happened so uh, i can't speak about you know the dentist but you can ask your audiologist i haven't any had any issues you know my processor and the dentist you know how they use those electrical tools and to clean your teeth and stuff but it's never impacted me so I can't say that it, it's a problem. Um, <laughs> if it did, <laughs> you'd be hearing me now. <laughs> but truly, any accidents, you know, you want to contact your audiologist or the um, cochlear uh, company right away, leave them a message, uh, let them know this XYZ accident happened. And, uh, you know, I use a power wheelchair. And, you know, sometimes I drop things, and I'm very careful not to run over it because <laughs> my power wheelchair weighs 240 pounds or somewhere around there, and then my weight on top of the chair and then run over a processor, that would not be good. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm careful <laughs> running around my room, and if I drop the processor, I'm very careful to figure out where it is 
so I don't run over it. So for you, that if you use a power wheelchair, um, be careful not to run over your processors. <laughs> that would not be good. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. Uh, nothing else. I can't think of anything else, but this is in more detail of taking care of your cochlear implant. Uh, I did one earlier, but I just wanted to spruce this one up in terms of, you know, pets and magnets and surgeries and all that kind of stuff. I, you know, and usually the processors come with instructions and the ideologist tells you about some, you know, obvious things, uh, you know, to be careful with like rain and uh, but sometimes an accident can happen, and of the worst kind. So uh, y you want to have those numbers available so that if something happens, you fall or you get in the shower accidentally, or <laughs> I've done that, <laughs> or, you know, a downpour, you know, of horrible kind. Uh, you know, just dry it off, put it in the dry and store, let your audiologist know and um, just wait, you know, the processor is pretty sturdy. So, you know, in the, in the dry and store, it usually resurrects, uh, just kind of like hearing aids. <laughs> so <laughs> but usually it survives, you know, rain. Uh, you just want to dry it off as soon as you get home and make sure that it's all good to go. So any questions or any concerns about um, any surgery that you might have uh, coming up, you know, you want to touch base with the audiologist and say, hey, you know, I have this surgery coming up. And usually they'll, they'll caution you and just say, you know, <coughs> in surgery rooms, they use a lot of electrical tools and that static could impact your processors. So uh, it's just a matter of electricity, you know, that, that might zap your uh, processors. Uh, a lot of processors have, a lot of companies have solved those problems already. And, um, you know, the, the processors are pretty sturdy in terms of static electricity. Uh, but you still want to be careful. So anyway, any questions about that? Uh, you know, any, any uh, processors lost and stuck on purses stories, feel free to... Uh <laughs> Put those down below because those were kind of funny uh, and certainly not funny sometimes. So I've had people who have lost their processors and couldn't find it and dropped it somewhere. They were trying to get into their car and um, they were just really frustrated because they lost their processor and, and it was stuck on the car the whole time. So <laughs> there are some funny stories out there. <laughs> So if you have a funny story that you would like to share about your processors or any accident that turned out to be kind of funny, uh, feel free to share it. <laughs> All right. Thank you for spending some time with me and listening to this whole um, video. And I hope you're, you're doing well. And come back soon. <laughs>